it's with great pleasure that I introduce to you the Speaker of the Wyoming House, who has helped us on many occasions, Colin Simpson. Thank you, Lynn. Hi there, everybody. I don't feel like I'm still on I-25. <laughs> I'm a little dazed, I'm sorry. Uh, left Cody early this morning and uh, dropped off some signs in Casper. I've got the, I've got the Suburban with the four by eight foot signs, about a hundred of them in there, and yard signs, and uh, uh, I made it to Casper where I dropped off about half of those. And then uh, uh, on the way down, the, I had uh, my campaign manager, Joe Milcheski, drive me. He's in Casper. My driver's grandmother died, so I, I am without a driver. Am I on the clock? <laughs> okay, yeah, so I have, what do I have, one minute? Okay, well I've got ten seconds left. I'm Colin Simpson from Cody. I'm the Speaker of the House. I've been in the legislature for 12 years, the Speaker for the last two. I've served on numerous committees, and uh, most importantly to you probably, I have a, a fairly extensive background in tourism, trade and retail just because I grew up in a town where that was very important and still is very important. I'm on the board of directors of the Buffalo Bill Historical Center and have been now for about five years. I was on the, the Buffalo Bill Museum uh, advisory board. I think I've been on there for about 16 years and we're always trying to figure out how we market for that institution and how we do a good job with that also. I, I'm also on the, uh, the board of uh, First National Bank and Trust out of Powell and have been on there for about five years. And uh, there's the end. So uh, uh, now is it, is it into the questions now? That's right. Okay, so it is. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm feeling a little better. <laughs> uh, Colin, welcome. My name is Ken Patel. I'm a board member of WLRA and a chair of the Government and Affairs Committee as well as chair of the WLA PAC. Uh, so uh, I have a chance to ask you the very first question, which is very, very important for us as well. Since the Wyoming Travel and Tourism Program is an investment that brings over 100 million a year in state and local taxes and 30,000 full-time and part-time jobs, would you maintain spending at the current level even in the light of budget shortfalls? I would, Ken. I, I believe that's very important, and, and I know that's historically been the practice, but even in the legislature in the last 12 years where we've, you know, the, the first couple years of, of my term there, uh, we were looking at some budget deficits, but even then, uh, I, I do believe strongly in the, in the logic that you, uh, you maintain the advertising because uh, it's got such a ripple effect through the economy. So the short answer is yes, I do support that. Sure. Colin, good to see you. Barry nice Seth with Taco Barry. John's. Yeah, nice to see you. Um, what would you do, and, and try to be as specific as possible, to uh, diversify or expand Wyoming's economy? What kinds of things would you put in place? Thanks, Barry. Uh, the age-old question of how we expand, yeah. I think it's got a couple components to it. One is a light regulatory touch from state government. I know we're so influenced by, by federal regulations also, but, but we're limited in, in what we can do in that regard. But in that regard, it's important that the governor have a, a high quality and good staff to address federal regulatory issues. On the state side also, uh, keeping, uh, keeping a light hand on business and, and looking at uh, how we regulate business in Wyoming. I've proposed the uh, Sunset Advisory Commission to look at all agencies, divisions, and departments and their regulations and look at them in depth over, say, a rotating schedule of maybe seven or eight years, once every seven or eight years, and figure out is there duplication, are we, are we unnecessarily burdening business, and uh, what can we do to eliminate that? Uh, uh, that's part of it. I, I believe strongly in lightening that regulatory hand. Thirdly, with regard to education, we have great funding in K-12 education. We have great facilities and we have great teachers. We have to figure out, and I think we can do this through a new, a new statewide effort with educators, administrators, 
business people and private citizens to look at the system and, and make sure that our definition of performance and quality is what we want to achieve what, uh, the best we can get out of our system. Because we can, we can improve the performance of our system and I believe that helps us then say to the rest of the country, we have the, if, if we could achieve the greatest education, K-12 education system in this country, what better economic development tool could you have uh, on top of the, the, the great uh, natural resources and natural qualities that, that we market all the time. So it's education, it's, it's a light regulatory hand, and it's encouraging entrepreneurship and, uh, and small business because that's, you know, each business starts as a small business somewhere, and that's very important that we encourage that. And we've done that through the business well, I mean, business council, business ready communities, uh, the community facilities programs, and, and those have been useful also. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sampson, I'm Tim Guyers, I'm a J.C. Penney and uh, current chair of the Wyoming Retail Association. Uh, my first question to you is, if revenues fall below projections and there's a need for additional taxes uh, during your administration, what specific taxes would you propose? Well, I would like to say none, uh, because I think that, uh, especially in my 12 years in the legislature, we have seen this huge increase in state revenue and somewhat of an increase in, in government. I push back against the concept, if it's you've heard it before, that, that state government has tripled in the last uh, 10 years. That's not true. Uh, and I can, I can give you a lot of specifics on that we have increased some things in state government. But uh, uh, I believe we need to look at cutting, and part of that is the Sunset Advisory Commission. And I also believe that those agency heads and division and department heads who are most right there tuned into what they're doing um, know what can be cut, and we've, we've initiated that with the governor last year, 10% uh, cut, some, some were 10, some were a little less. Uh, but, uh, you know, if, if I, I would have to see what situation we were in, where dollars were needed, where sales tax levels were, and, uh, and other severance, federal mineral royalty taxes, and I wouldn't want to make that decision right now because that's an extremely <laughs> tough decision. I do have opinions about tax fairness and which taxes are, are more fair than others. Uh, but uh, I think you would have to apply that. But that would be my last choice would, to raise, would be to raise taxes. So did I waffle around enough on that <laughs> to, uh, to avoid the, you know, uh, there, are, there certainly are taxes that are more fair than others, but, but I think uh, you have to determine the circumstances of it too. Um, and I don't want to commit to raising any taxes, so I'm not going to. <laughs> 